Hey kids, Firefighter Rick here again. And you know, sometimes in life, we gotta deal with people that are not a lot of fun. It could be our brother, sister, parents maybe. But sometimes life, it's a train wreck. This book was published by New Horizon Press. My brother is a pain in the back seat. This book was given to me by a friend of mine, Kayla, and her daughters, JC and Hadley. And I'm reading this book for them because this is their favorite book. When I was 10 years old, my pesky brother CJ drove me crazy every chance he got. He made my life difficult because he was younger and he could get away with anything. Since I was the oldest of three boys and two girls, I'd get blamed for everything, even things I didn't do. My parents said things like, Act your age, Dale. You know better. You're the oldest. CJ took advantage of me because I was the oldest. He especially liked to blow spitballs at me. If I barely touched him, he screamed that I was beating him up, and I couldn't do anything about it because I was the oldest. My mother would say, overlook him. He's your little brother. And CJ would just smile. It happened over and over, even on vacations. We were supposed to help with the suitcases, he'd whine, they're too heavy, so I'd have to take them. When CJ did carry something, he'd drop it. Then, I'd have to just go get it. I never forgot one special trip. The car was loaded down. The two little ones, Sissy and Jonathan, climbed into the front seat with Mom and Dad. CJ and my sister, Janet, hopped into the back seat with me. Daddy cleared his voice. Kids, he said, don't forget the rules of the car. He counted off. Rule number one, hush up in the back seat. We all chimed in. I was always quiet. I knew the rules. Okay, Daddy said. What's rule number two? Don't fight over the seats, we all called out. We never fought over seats in my daddy's car. We each had our own spot. And we sat there every time. I always sat in the back seat next to the door behind my mother. I read books to entertain myself because her old 1953 Chevy had no radio. When I was 10, most cars didn't have radios. My sister Janet always sat in this middle seat next to me. She put her feet on the hump because she had short legs. She spent the entire trip working on puzzles, especially dot to dot and maze puzzles. She loved to put her pencil on a maze puzzle where it said, start here, and tried her find her way out of the maze. But if we hit a bump, her pencil would shoot across the page. Then she'd have to erase and start all over. My brother CJ always sat next to the other door behind daddy. He never brought books or puzzles. Instead, he spent his time bothering me. On this trip, all of us kids settled down as the car humped along the road. I quietly read my books while Janet worked on her puzzles. In a little while, CJ slowly eased his hand into his pocket and pulled out a little alligator clip. It was so small I didn't even notice it. It was shaped like a tiny clothespin and made of stainless steel with sharp needle teeth. Daddy told him not to get those clips out of the toolbox, but CJ had his pocket full of them anyways. Soon he squeezed the clip open and slipped it around behind my sister's back all the way over to my side of the car. That is when I felt a sharp pinch. I jumped and screamed, ow! My daddy pulled off on the road and stopped the car. He turned around and stared at us in the back seat. Then he growled, the next time that happens, it will be the last time that it happens. I just kept quiet. CJ shrugged his shoulders and said, I didn't do nothing. That's what he always said. Daddy pulled the car back onto the road. We were back on vacation. When my arm stopped hurting, I went back to reading my books, and Janet went back to working on her puzzles. But in a little while, 
CJ slipped his hand back into his pocket. This time, he took out a long alligator clip with a strong spring. Again, he reached behind my sister's back to where I was sitting and... Ow! He got me again in the same spot! All at once, Daddy stomped on the brakes. The car groaned as it went into four-wheel slide and stopped. We peeled ourselves off the back of the front seat. Our old car didn't have seat belts. Then something else happened. Daddy didn't say a word. My heart pounded as he got out. He stepped slowly to the back of the car. He opened CJ's door and reached into the back seat and took my brother out. My daddy lifted CJ up in the air. My other brother eyes got big and big as his feet dangled above the ground. His mouth dropped open, but no words came out. Daddy gritted his teeth. Christopher James, I don't want to hear a word out of you for the next 30 minutes. And keep your hands to yourself, got it? With tears in his eyes, CJ nodded as Daddy put him back into the car and closed the door. We drove off. My brother sobbed softly. I grinned. Daddy finally got the right one. After all these years, I finally experienced justice and it felt wonderful. We were back on vacation now. As we drove, my arm stopped hurting and I went back to reading my books. Janet went back to working on her puzzles, but TJ, well, he kept sniffling. His limbs trembled as he finally asked, Mama, is 30 minutes up yet? My mother looked at her watch. Yes, it has been about 30 minutes, but don't make a bunch of noise and bother your father while he's driving. He has to watch the road. But, 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 CJ whimpered. Daddy, you know when you stopped the car back there and you took me out of the car and you held me in the air? My shoes fell off. My daddy immediately pulled the car off the road again and stopped. I thought I saw steam coming out of his ears as he turned around in his seat. He yanked off his hat and glared straight at my brother. Why in the world didn't you tell me? You told me not to say nothing, CJ answered innocently. I knew daddy was trapped. For once, my brother had done exactly what he was told and he hadn't said a word. We have to go back and get your shoes, Daddy fussed. Without those shoes, you'll be barefoot for the rest of vacation, CJ. We can't afford to buy you another pair. Daddy jerked the steering wheel around and pulled the gear shift down. The car spun around and left burned rubber marks on the road. We tore back 30 miles to get those shoes. Luckily, CJ's shoes were still on there beside the road. Of course, they had been flattened and covered with tire tracks. My daddy got out of the car, picked up the shoes, and threw them in the back seat. We were back on vacation. And from then on, wherever we got into the car to go somewhere, my daddy never told us to hush up again. And all he ever said was, you better remember those shoes. And we all knew what that meant. Thank you for joining us for Storytime.